Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I would like to share with you some uh, ideas and uh, notes I have made for um, dealing with the challenges, dilemmas, assumptions, and opportunities in our way to sustainable development in our era, in an era of crisis. And actually, two of these crises um, are still uh, with us. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic and the crisis uh, of the war in uh, Ukraine. Two crises that started from uh, local, national, and uh, um, affect the uh, entire, actually, globe as it concerns energy, food production, apart from the humanitarian and uh, health issues. These uh, crises are uh, uh, connected with the challenges that um, are with us for some time. And the major uh, two of them are the climate change and the massive loss of biodiversity. These two are um, really interconnected and uh, they are connected to other, a series of other root causes, if you wish, such as um, overpopulation. We are uh, now at the level of 8 billion, um, unemployment, but also um, consumerism and uh, uh, use of um, natural resources, uh, overexploitation of natural resources beyond the capacities of uh, uh, the, na the natural boundaries of our planet. When we are talking about um, uh, the climate change, um, I have to uh, remind us that um, uh, approximately 20, 15 years ago, when we started uh, uh, um, predicting, let's say, having the different scenario, we believed that uh, <clears throat> we may, with the business as usual of that moment, uh, we have uh, uh, we had um, um, uh, to um, the as most probable um, uh, temperature for the end of the century the four to five degrees. Um, I will come back to that uh, later on, based on some different assumptions. The major uh, at the moment we have already. Uh, evidences, proofs of the of the change of our planet, and we know that we are in the hottest period ever of the recorded history, and uh, all um, what we have from sediments and uh, other uh, um, uh, ways to, to to calculate what uh, were the uh, temperatures of the past. We are 1.2 to 1.3 uh, actually degrees higher than uh, the average of all the previous years, millennia. Uh, what is the, uh, the result of that increase? It is already the melting of um, ice caps and um, you see what is going on in uh, the Antarctica. A big part of this uh, is uh, of the cover is destroyed, and um, uh, we have lost many um, significant parts of glaciers. We are afraid of bigger um, uh, similar destructions in Himalaya and elsewhere. We hope that. Um, this will not be as bad as some predict, already with 1.2 degrees. And we have agreed in Paris um, 
to try not to exceed 1.5 degrees. We know that with uh, the delay we have in approaching this target, 13 out of the 17 SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals agreed in 2015, have not reached the point we expected, or actually with the crisis, we have lost part of the progress that has been achieved in the previous years. But when we are talking about already existing changes in the planet, we have already uh, uh, a loss, a, a, a tremendous loss of biodiversity. We have uh, a series of droughts and floods, <clears throat> reduced river flows in European rivers and all over the world. In uh, the Nile, uh, for example, in the upper and the, in the blue um, Nile, in the two parts, we have something like 20 and 30 percentage um, decrease of the peak uh, the maximum, the peak values um, uh, recorded annually. So, in the last few years, we have 20, 30 less than the historical peaks. But we have also important heat waves um, with um, uh, death uh, tolls uh, for um, uh, people and animals and, of course, uh, extended uh, um, uh, forest fires. And uh, all of that um, lead to a significant loss of agricultural production. What uh, we... Why we have that? Because, as I said, we have, with our activities, let me put it in, in a nutshell, we have added something like 3 billion tons, we humans, 3 billion tons of carbon in the atmosphere. 3 billion tons, to give you a, a comparison for mass and volume, uh, corresponds to the total material that is included in all human structures all over the world and all objects we have uh, manufactured. All this is now in the atmosphere as carbon. So you understand uh, that this is a blanket all over, the, uh, all over uh, our Earth. And also the um, production for example, of some continents, for example, only for of the United States, out of this, the one-fifth um, um, uh, is produced uh, by the United States. And uh, the, all this, uh, if I put it in to, sh to show you what should be done and what, where we are, the CO2 uh, carbon dioxide emissions tons per capita per year uh, in Canada, for example, and the United States, approximately the same, are 14.2 per capita, per, per person, per year. In China, this uh, is 5. In India, is 2.1. Uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in some areas, is less than 2. And we need to reach approximately 2.2 2 in 2030, and less than one half by 2050. Is it at all possible? The answer is yes. It is if we try hard. Um, let me give you a few elements from the, the from Sharm El Sheikh, from COP27, where I have uh, participated uh, actively. We have 
bad news and good news. The bad news is that we are late as it concerns the agreements of Paris. As I said, we are already at about 1.3 degrees. The good news, and, and this, is not, um, this is not something, um, I mean, uh, not expected. We, we were afraid of that. But, and the crisis played a role. The good news is that um, we expect that um, with current provisions, we may have by the end of uh, the century two to three degrees, not five, a little bit than half of the predicted, which is a very good news. Not as good as we wish, and as we wished, but I'm afraid that uh, we may try and reach something around two degrees. And this is, by itself, uh, a good news. It was um, uh, obtained uh, through uh, really new political awakening and uh, revised um, policies, uh, global policies, uh, which require a lot of effort. The second uh, reason is the astonishing decline of the price of clean energies. Uh, nobody expected such a, a, a drop of the uh, and this is the result of innovation and technology. And also, um, we, should, um, uh, we should also um, uh, recognize that um, some of the assumptions we had uh, were not ex so good. Actually, we have a revision of some of the modeling assumptions we have. Uh, this means that um, if we uh, manage to be at the two degrees, of course the planet will continue and change even more. For example, uh, with two degrees, <coughs> because the, uh, the, the heat is moving from the uh, Ecuador, from the tropicals, to, uh, towards the poles, um, the, the species also follow that. They go north or south. And uh, we, even with uh, two degrees, 10,000 of the most important species will lose half of their habitat, even with this moderate increase. But on, no, not only that, there are several other problems for example, the spillover of um, viruses, because uh, with this move, um, viruses from one species, there, there are many new en encounters um, among species, and a, 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 a virus from one species gets into another, and then you have um, this spillover of um, viruses. We expect that in the coming 40 to 50 years we'll have 4,000 of these spillovers. Of course, we hope uh, that most of them will not be as dangerous and harmful as, the, um, as uh, COVID, but many of them will be. Um, this requires even I mean, to remain somewhere in between 1.5 and 2, or 2 and something, requires a total transformation of all our systems of production and consumption, and, for example, starting with the energy systems, the transportation, the building, um, the agricultural production, the overall infrastructures. 
As I said, some predict that even with this moderate change, we'll have a new era of uh, uh, disasters. What we have as um, uh, technical means are promising. Um, it, it is promising what, what we have for methods. First of all, we need to start by revisiting and understanding that governance schemes need to be changed and uh, policies need to be truly integrated. One of these policies we are, are advocating for is the with uh, the, uh, the water, energy, food ecosystem policy, to see all these four together. And uh, we do, within this, we need to see how we can generate new water and uh, water treatment, uh, sewage water, uh, sewage treatment for production of clean water or gray water is one of them. Um, uh, better management of uh, groundwater is another, and of course desalination, using clean technologies. Uh, we need to have, uh, in order to have um, uh, clean energy, we have to move into um, new types of solar, in, uh, offshore wind power, there are excellent new systems uh, that also monitor the, the presence or the approach of uh, cetaceans or other um, species, so not to be endangered. These two, together with a new generation of advanced nuclear um, reactors, small reactors that can be moved from place to place, and geothermal and other <coughs> waves and other, uh, could generate also enough energy for the new green hydrogen production. So we uh, hope there is a um, prediction that uh, by 2030 uh, the, uh, the, the traditional um, uh, fuel uh, will be reduced to 30% and the rest will be covered by uh, what I mentioned before. In the transport, we, we expect to have uh, very significant changes with electric cars, with biking, green, green spaces, public uh, transport um, and uh, um, modes that are um, at the moment um, um, almost unthinkable for us. They, there is, uh, as it concerns, particularly long distance um, transport. Buildings require massive um, um, changes uh, for insulations, for changes uh, with uh, perhaps smaller windows, uh, and new equipment, uh, that need to be produced uh, massively. For example, uh, if you want to have uh, a door that is uh, so good um, in um, uh, keeping, uh, in insulating, uh, like a door of a refrigerator, uh, and you order it now, it costs a lot. Um, but uh, if you uh, if you compare it with the price of a door of uh, a refrigerator or the refrigerator as a whole. We need to produce refrigerators we, com we, we produced in millions. In millions we need uh, the new equipment for re replacing, re retrofitting uh, the different uh, uh, buildings. We are talking about massive transformations and what I can say is that many of them <clears throat> will manage to um, respond to the needs for mitigation and adaptation, particularly in our developed um, world. We may have hardier infrastructures, higher dikes, um, new, uh, new infrastructures, um, cooling uh, infrastructures, uh, cool roofs, new pavements, water canals under buildings, 
under uh, buildings, um, uh, uh, large scale um, um, air conditioning, and so on and so forth. But um, this is for the minority of the planet. What about the rest of the planet, particularly the particularly poor, who have contributed less than 1% for the damage? We are talking about a major equity and the major climate justice. Let's say in, um, in Sahel, in uh, South uh, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, there where we have 60% of the population with uh, ages length, less than 25 years old, with massive unemployment, with very weak governments, with absence of um, infrastructures, with high number of um, terrorist groups and uh, armed, private armed, I mean, groups that are uh, practically are groups of criminals. And uh, they create excessive humanitarian problems, particularly for women and for, for girls and, and children. And there is one of the big problems, one of the big problems uh, of, the, of the future. Um, I, I, I want to say that because the one American actually consumes 200 times as one of the people of these areas of Africa, of, uh, uh, of India, of Africa in particular. And by the way, with the one, two, one, three degrees, they have already lost 15% of their agricultural uh, production. Um, so uh, we are talking about real problems. Opportunities, of course, opportunities, many more opportunities, because to, to change, to transform all what we are discussing generates trillions of uh, revenues. Uh, it is um, um, estimated that we, um, from the solar, uh, the solar entrepreneurs and others in the energy, uh, in renewable energies, will have 12 trillions of dollars annual revenue gains. So we hope that some of this will come into the economy and uh, redistribute, um, generating more jobs, green jobs. Also, we've heard in, uh, uh, in COP27 that philanthropy already contributes something like 67 billion dollars per year but only 2% of that is going to climate change and nature at the moment. And they, they promise to increase this amount, but not to solve the problem per se with these billions. They say that these billions will motivate trillions of dollars that are the ones, what is necessary actually uh, for, for the transformation. And we need to create the necessary capital, the, 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 the human capital, I mean, with uh, uh, digitalization, digital literacy, new green uh, uh, train, training for new green skills. Um, but also, we need to see um, uh, at many levels, uh, the, 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 um, the leadership. Um, we need um, to put particular emphasis on um, the universities because these are the, this is the immediate next uh, leadership uh, generation. Um, we need, uh, in Greece, we have the new st now strategy for um, uh, uh, universities, uh, for the sustainability in universities, 
we have presented it also uh, internationally. And we need uh, to change the curricula to make the university showcases of sustainability to work with the governance inside the universities and also linking the universities really with the society. Still, what we need is to address the eco-anxiety, the brain damage problems. We are talking about now new uh, neurophysiology approaches where we are talking about not only brain health, but also the green brain capital, brain skills, the ecological intelligence, um, all kind of um, enabling conditions for the society and for the individuals. We are talking about a, a new era, a really new era. And uh, this is also where uh, UNESCO, and we had uh, recently a meeting of UNESCO chairs in Paris where I participated, where UNESCO came with the suggestion and a new book about reimagining our future or our futures uh, will not be exactly the same in all parts of the world. So what is that? It is that we need to couple the uh, ethical values uh, with hope, together with the technical uh, ingenuity, uh, in order to uh, address uh, the new era. And um, even if sometimes our analysis are, cannot be optimistic, we have to conduct policies in a very optimistic way, allowing the planet and humanity to find its way and reducing the delays from the vested interests. Thank you very much for your attention.